<clears throat> well, good evening and uh, welcome once again, one and all, to the Sporting Club's Sports Quiz with the Stars. Hope you've had a good day, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, tonight. We've got another great sports star with us. In fact, uh, the best that there is. Uh, but before we introduce uh, this um, amazing sportswoman, uh, a little bit of housekeeping for you. Obviously, the Sporting Club is uh, is back more and more. Uh, our venues are opening. Hallelujah. Um, and we are announcing various uh, events as well. We have a David Hay lunch in the city on uh, September the 10th. Social media distancing, of course, uh, in place. We've got a Barry Hearn breakfast on October the 1st, a, a Tim Henman lunch on October the 20th, an evening with the World Cup rugby winner Lewis Moody on November the 12th, uh, and a lunch with Sir Jackie Stewart on November the 18th. And of course, uh, first week in December, God willing, uh, we have our special Sports Towards Gala Dinner on December the 1st and a very special Christmas lunch at Old Trafford in Manchester with the man of the moment, Ben Stokes, with Joe Root. So lots going on. There'll be even more uh, to be announced uh, over uh, the next few days and weeks, including an exciting new division to uh, the Sporting Club as well, which should interest absolutely everybody. But enough about that. Let's talk about tonight. Let's talk about uh, tonight's guest. Uh, great friend of the club. She was an, an amazing uh, lunch guest uh, we had um, a couple of years ago. She had a slip disc, but still insisted on coming, stood for the whole lunch and went round and pretty much shook everybody's hand. And uh, she was a real trooper then. She'll be a real trooper tonight. She is the most successful British Winter Olympian of all time. Nobody else has won two Winter Olympic gold medals, but this lady has. She's also the most successful skeleton athlete in the world of all time. Uh, she is, of course, uh, the wonderful, the amazing Lizzie Yarnold OBE. And um, this is always the moment of truth with a bit of luck. Uh, Lizzie is there and Lizzie uh, will be joining us. This is always the moment. Uh, I know she is there. Oh, I see some activity. I see some activity. Lizzie, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hi, how are you? Hey, it works. Um, <laughs> fantastic. I have to say you're looking very summery for a winter Olympian. I know. I actually, uh, I don't enjoy the sun, but I get really hot. So I've got to dress appropriately. It's such nice weather. I love it. Well, listen, I don't know whether you can see from, from where you are, but... Um, all I can see is you in a summer dress, okay. me with my rubber plant behind me. But okay. the viewers have got a nice backdrop behind us of alpine mountains and snow, would you believe? Yeah. Can you see that or is it just the viewers? I can't see that at all. <laughs> I'm, not make, I'm not making it up. Or the, as far as the viewers are concerned, they've no. been transported in the middle of July into a winter wonderland just for I you. I wish I dressed more appropriately. I don't have anything wintry here. <laughs> no, but you would have looked a bit daft, wouldn't you? It is July. Um, but but anyway, we're lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us, uh, Lizzie. And, and as you know, well, we're going to have a bit of a chat at, at half time. Before we do anything else, though, we should mention that we're, we're um, highlighting and promoting and creating awareness for your chosen charity tonight, which is MIND. Why, uh, why are we uh, focusing on MIND tonight? I think it's it's just a brilliant charity that I know a few people in my life have been supported by. Um, I've done a couple of events to support them. And I, I, as an athlete, I've focused so much on my physical health in my life up until this point. And I think that just having better conversations around mental health, physical health, you know, both coming together and um, to make us happy humans. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a great charity. So thank you for giving me the chance to raise some money. Not at all. And by the way, it's it's particularly relevant now, isn't it? Because we're we're four months into lockdown. OK, it's easy, but um, it's it's been tough for everybody. But it's been very tough for some people, especially when it comes to mental health. Yeah, I think it's been tough for everyone. And when people ask me how I'm doing, I think I can only really answer in that moment because emotions and situations fluctuate so 
you know, so much. Um, I just hope that we are able to have those conversations and to know that um, the world's not going to fall down if you say, you know, I am struggling or today's not a good day. That's totally normal. Yeah. OK, well said. So, everybody, Mind um, is our chosen charity. We've raised money for Mind before, probably a couple of years ago. I don't know whether we did it with your lunch, actually. I was just telling everybody before you came on how you were a real trooper at our lunch. You had a slip disc and you still yeah. insisted on coming and you stood for the whole lunch and just went round shaking everybody's hands. Yeah, I couldn't sit down, could I? <laughs> and I didn't want to look odd, so I think we came up with a plan to just go around and chat to people and, uh, yeah, it's not a good time, but I'm much better now. The only, the only bad thing about that, apart, apart from your discomfort, obviously, was the fact that I couldn't really sit in the high chair to interview you, so I had to stand as well. <laughs> well, we rocked it. It was all good. I, I loved it. I remember. And I remember the lunch was also delicious. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it, well, did you have it standing up then? I can't really remember. I, yeah, not sure. Maybe. Anyway, listen, we appreciated you, you coming. A lot of a lot of lesser people would have pulled out, so so thank you. Right, so listen, we're going to chat during the quiz. We're going to definitely chat at half-time, yeah. uh, but I know that um, the uh, millions and millions and millions of people worldwide, might be a slight exaggeration, um, are poised <laughs> with pens and pencil and pieces of paper, because that's old school, ready to um, have a crack at our sports quiz. Um, you've seen the questions. The idea is to try and make it little bit challenging but not so challenging it's no fun so we'll see how everybody does i do the odd numbers um and you do the even numbers there's a few winter sport questions in there obviously um so i'll get cracking if everybody is ready at home uh off we go question one and it's a cricket question um uh, very relevant england beat the west indies yesterday and as i'm sure we all know jimmy anderson and stuart broad are the most successful bowlers in english history the number one and then number two in terms of leading wicket takers, the question I want to ask you is, who's number three and who is number four in that list? And that question is worth two points. Lizzie, over to you for question two. Oh, you're not hanging about. We're going through them quick. Yeah, but we're going to do the answers afterwards. We'll have a bit of a chat as well. By the okay. way, it's discerning audience. They know their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, rugby question. The Six Nations this year was um, has not yet been completed. Which two teams are currently level on top of the table? So that's worth two points. Do you like your rugby? Um, I'm glad this has the answers because I wouldn't have got that one. I do that's like true. rugby, but <laughs> I'm not good at quizzes. But the reason why I asked you that is because, of course, um, although you're a Seven Oaks girl, aren't you? And I think you're now living in Portsmouth. For, for all your training during the... Um, you know, during, when you were an athlete, you, you trained in that very, very well-known wintry resort called Bath, didn't you? Yeah. Which is a big rugby town. Yeah, it's amazing. When the rugby's on, you can just almost hear the city boom. Um, it's, it's a wicked atmosphere. It's really nice to see everyone out and about and enjoying themselves before and after the match. But I think I've been a couple of times. I, I do enjoy rugby, but it's a big social thing for me. Like, I just love being a part of it. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a, 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 a bit of a window into the way you lead your life, Lizzie Arnold, doesn't it? Eh? <laughs> I'm a Guinness drinker, what can I say? Yeah, yeah, I can see it now. But by the way, what a beautiful, beautiful rugby ground uh, in terms of yeah. the backdrop and everything. Probably the, the most beautiful rugby ground in, in professional rugby in this country. Absolutely sensational. Right. Um, now, by the way, very quickly, Guinness absolutely have nothing else when I'm in Ireland. I think it's just a bit creamier over there. I don't really drink it over here. Is that have you heard that said before? I have, and I haven't been to the factory um, in Ireland, so I've I've yet to drink proper Guinness over there. I feel ashamed that I I've only drunk um, like UK but, um, canned Guinness, but I think it's really good. It's good iron levels as well. Brilliant. By the way, uh, people watching this, believe it or not, we are talking to a former top <laughs> athlete. Just in case, you're in case you've just got some old winer one by mistake. Okay, right. <laughs> My turn. Question three. It's a football question. Marcello Bielsa in the news because Leeds United have been promoted to the Premier League at long last and they're champions of the championship. Question I want to ask you is, can you name two club teams, not national teams, because he's managed a few uh, countries as well. Name two club teams that Bielsa has also managed apart from Leeds United. And that is also worth 
two points. And of course, that leads me on to asking you, are you a football fan? We used to go and watch Charlton as kids. So it went sort of in and out of the premiership for a couple of years. Um, so we had some season tickets then. And again, like the thing I remember is parking up way out and walking in and the closer and closer you got that the fans joined and the camaraderie about it. I mean, Charlton barely won. So it's good that I remember the solidarity bit. And that's because you lived in Sevenoaks, yeah? So that you, you kind of thought that was your local team, yeah? That was the closest premiership team, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now, I used to go to Charlton a bit as well. They used Did to do um, Red Red Robin keeps Bob Bob Bobbing along when the team used to come out, which I didn't think was the most intimidating song. That's really weird. I haven't heard that for years, but when you just said that, it did take me back. God, that's yeah. Cool. The drummers, we, we were up near the amazing drummers, so it's good. I mean, I I I, I once got a game for Wigan rugby league team, and uh, which is another story for another day. But as we walked out the tunnel, uh, they played the theme tune to Gladiator. And he felt really sort of, ah. but I, yeah. I can't believe you'd come out going ah, to <laughs> red, red one goes bob, bob, bobbing <laughs> along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you were an opposing player, you wouldn't be intimidated by that, would you? Not really. Right. Your question, um, and you ought to know this one, question four. Yes. OK, so apart from myself, Team GB have won two further Winter Olympic golds since the turn of the century. Can you name who the winners are? And that's worth two points. There we go. And everybody will 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 know it, especially when we give the answer um, for, 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 for that. Um, OK, my turn. Question five. Boxing. Uh, in 1971, the, the fight which was labelled the fight of the century took place and for two points i want to know uh first who fought in the fight of the century and secondly where was it i'm going to give you a little bit of a clue it's a famous venue so i don't want the city i want the name of the venue but it is pretty famous um so that is worth two points um uh, <laughs> might as well ask you this one as well are you a boxing fan um i think bunts and someone does the commentary on Just radio Bunsen who? Costello. Costello, yeah. I quite enjoy the commentary. I like their knowledge and they like invite me in to understand more about boxing when I don't know the technicalities. So I like listening to it. I remember when Joshua was fighting a couple of years ago. Um, it was a big fight. Was it? Klitschko? Uh, could have been Klitschko because it was about 2016. And I thought, yeah. I don't want to pay BT or whoever. It was like 30 quid. And I didn't want to pay, so I listened to it on commentary and, and on text. And I was in Bermuda traveling for the America's Cup, and I was in the queue for security, which took forever. I was like, I've got to get to the hotel, I've got to get to the hotel. I did data roaming and spent like 50 quid just to get the running commentary of the fight. So I, I don't spend a load of money like watching it, but I do love the build up. I love like that um yeah the like the inside knowledge the, the psychology of it all and how tyson fury is going to be over the next few years whether you get a uh, fury and um anthony as well it will be it'll be really interesting do you know if um if when they announced you onto the slope before you did your thing <laughs> they announced you in the same way they, they did boxing what would have been your ring walk theme your tune yeah and now um, from the uk defending olympic champion Lizzie Arnold, and then they, they play the music and you come running in high-fiving. What's the, what's, I, the, what's the song? I wouldn't have come out five, high-fiving anyone. I think I would have been way too moody. It would have been some sort of, like, grime artist. So I'm not sure who. Um, I listened to a lot of gigs in that time. And basically what I think about that choice of music was the continuous beat that kept me in the moment. And also the aspirational um, words and, and rhymes. It was it sort of kept me in a really good headspace. So I'm definitely not going to be high-fiving. I'm just going to be staring out people and trying to psych them out. Oh, a little bit like Mike Tyson then, just almost intimidating, just a it, towel over your head and a glare. Exactly. Don't, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm not quite, <laughs> I don't compare it to Mike Tyson, but he's... Bit of, bit of Stormzy, animal. maybe. Yeah. Make a bit of Stormzy for you? Yes, yeah, Stormzy, yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And Is hopefully nobody's, nobody's going to think I, I don't know much about Grime or Stormzy. <laughs> hopefully nobody will, nobody will click on, on that fact. Right, um, it is your turn, Lizzie. Not Question fair. six. Yeah, athletics. So um, I'd love to know who is the current 
um, holder of the British 100 metre record. This is the men's record, um, worth one point. Oh, I, I love it. I, I used to love covering the uh, the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics, but the Summer Olympics, and I was lucky enough to um, to witness the, quite a few 100 metre Olympic finals. And I think um, that is one of the, the 100, 100 metres final, men and women, I think is one of the moments in the Olympics when you drop whatever you're doing. Yeah. To watch. Yeah. Montel Douglas held the British women's record for a long time. She now does um, some work in bobsleigh. She's a break woman. Um, but, you know, watching Dina and like that she is not the tallest athlete. She's um, she has so much um, natural talent and just watching her, you know, go head to head, watch them line up is, is just brilliant to watch. You just don't know what is going to happen. I hope they know. But yeah. And you've just made a really good point, actually, which I'd completely forgotten about. Um, a lot of sprinters have had a go, and some of them successfully, at the bobsled. Of course, the reason why is the start is so important. Yeah, definitely. So in bobsled, it's a little bit different. You've got the driver who has the skill, the knowledge, the experience of years and years, and then they've got their team of brakemen. Um, so you have four man, four women bobsled as well. Um, so yeah, for the, for the brakemen, it's so important to have strong athletes, quick athletes, and basically get into position. And then you've got that amazing, like, I think of me dancing down the track, but you've got four like crash helmets who are having to completely align for aerodynamics. It's, um, it's a true show of, um, teamsmanship. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. My, my turn question seven. It's a golf question. Uh, the Ryder Cup has been postponed this year. It's going to take place next year. And by the way, Lizzie, next year is going to be the, in, the most incredible year of sport because it's a combination of this year and yeah. next year. So as well as... How they gonna, when does the Ryder Cup happen? It's after the Olympics, isn't it? It's, it's so September, end of September, early October. Yeah. So you've got the Olympics and the Ryder Cup and the Euros all postponed from this year. Yeah. And then throw in, throw into the mix the lions. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> we'll be um, exhausted. Oh, and then all the usuals of the Wimbledons and the you know it's it's going to be absolutely uh, phenomenal. Anyway, golf question is the Ryder Cup. Um, uh, was a Ryder Cup question. Uh, five Europeans have scored twenty points or more in the history of the Ryder Cup. Nick Faldo leads the way with twenty five points. Can you name? three of the other four all famous european golfers can you name three of the other four european golfers have scored 20 points or more right your turn lizzie question eight all right tennis question when tennis was readmitted to the summer olympics in 1988 in seoul who won the men's and women's singles titles worth two points and that was the year that i was born and couple of years after I was born as well <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing um <laughs> anyway that's uh that's that's quite a good question that if, if you think you know your tennis you could have to have a little think about that one yeah um but anyway good one right my turn question nine it's a formula one question um so Alex Alban a uh, very promising young uh, driver is currently fifth in the uh, world drivers championships um Simply, I want to know, where does he come from? Which country does he come from? A little bit of a clue. It's not a traditional, famous motorsport country. Name the country, Alex Arburn, one point. And finally, for the first half of the questions, Lizzie, question 10, it's, uh, it's another winter sport question. It is. So from 1976 onwards, GB have won three gold medals in ice skating. Can you name who won them? And that's three points. Yeah. Two is easy and one is really hard. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, then. You, do you ice skate? You, you, you think you would, but maybe that logically doesn't actually make sense. No, it's no, no. <laughs> and, Seriously? I mean, the theory is there, understanding ice dynamics and stuff, but um, no, I just, want, I just want to lie down and someone... Give me a, <laughs> a push. Give me a push. Yeah. yeah, it's that easy. Just lie down and suddenly give you <laughs> so do, you, do you ski? Do you do anything? Yeah, I love else? skiing. So that's where my, um, I guess, my passion for winter sports really started. We were, I think I was about 
six, seven when we went on a school trip to Italy with mum and dad and everyone was there because uh, mum was a teacher. And then this, by the second trip, we went with um, a couple of other families and my best friend Lucy's dad, he said, Lizzie, just what you've got to do is get into this tuck position, just tuck your poles in and, and just head down and just don't stop. And I just set off, you know, following his instructions and I could just hear my dad shouting, stop, stop. And, you know, I was just, I love that feeling of almost being out of control, going over the lunch, you don't know what's going to happen, but actually it's fine. I know what I'm doing. And um, yeah, we would ski every year when I was a kid and I just loved, you know, on the lift in the morning, first up and it's just quiet, it's peaceful. And there's just like, it's just nature. It's amazing. A lot of people are nodding, uh, nodding their head at, at that. Right. So that little little chat there gave people time to finish uh, uh, writing down the questions. So we can provide the answers for the first 10, uh, Lizzie, and then we'll have a little break. OK, so I'm going to begin. Uh, so question one was um, uh, Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broader, one and two in the uh, England's leading wicket uh, test cricket wicket takers. Who is three and four? It is, of course, number three, Sir Ian Botham, soon to be Lord. Lord oh. Ian Botham, um, with 383 wickets. Uh, and then fourth, the really sadly and very recently departed Bob Willis on 325. So Ian Botham and Bob Willis is the answer to question one. Question two. So the question was around the, um, the Six Nations hasn't yet been completed. Which two teams are joint at the top? The answers are England and France. England and France, yes. And be interested to see how they... What they decide to do, whether they wrap it up in the autumn, whether they just stop it, you know, it's all it's all to uh, to be announced. Question three, football question about Marcello Bielsa, who's just got Leeds United up into the Premier League. Name two clubs that he has also managed. I'm not going to name them all because there's a lo there's quite a few of them, and some of them not even I've heard of. So I'll name five, and hopefully you've got two of these: Atletico Bilbao, Bilbao, uh, Marseille, Lazio. Lille and Espanol. So um, if you've got two of those, as Richard Osman says, very well done at home. <laughs> question four. Yeah, question four. So this is a winter sports one, of course. Apart from myself, Team GB have had two gold medals since the turn of the century. And the answers are Amy Williams in 2010 and um, the GB women's curling team in 2002. And you know what? This is the beauty of the Olympics, isn't it? Summer or winter, you get into sports you, you don't particularly think about or you didn't think you were into. I remember watching Rona Martin, whatever it is, pitching. So, yeah. The, the stone. Throwing the, the stone. stone. Throwing. throwing. Yeah, the yeah. stone to win the gold medal. And the phone rang and I was expecting a call from America. It had been, been off and on for three weeks. It was a really important call. And I picked <laughs> up the phone and I literally said, not now, we're going for gold in the curling. <laughs> so the whole country got into curling, didn't they? For, oh, for big one. time. Big time. And sweeps. We all got into sweeps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, question five is, is over to you. No, it's not. Question. No, it's, no, yeah. no, it's over to me. Question five is over to me. 1971, fight of the century. Who fought that fight and where was it? It was uh, the great Muhammad Ali against the great Joe Frazier. And I mentioned it's at a very famous venue. It is at Madison Square Garden. Really famous boxing venue, really famous ice hockey venue, tennis venue. Just a really famous venue. Question six, Lizzie, over to you. Yes, this was the 100 metres record holder. Who was it? Only worth one point. The answer was Linford Christie. But if you got the time, do you think people should get another point? Because I see you're, you're just bending the rules now, aren't you? Give them <laughs> half a point. Give them half, half a point. point. So the, the time was 9.91 and it was back in 1991. And here's something very briefly that um, I was going to uh, mention to you. So 1992, Barcelona Olympics. And I was in the stadium, pretty much on the finish line, when they did the classic camera close-up and all the athletes lining up. And there was, I forgot his name, was it Leroy Burrell? An American who was next to Linford. And the American had the world record by some distance from Linford's best time. And when the camera went on this guy, he was his eyes were everywhere. He was moving about all over the place. And then it went to Linford and he was literally poof, blinkered. 
And I remember saying, I don't often get things right, by the way, which is why I remember this. I remember saying to the people around me, Liverpool's going to win this. And they said, well, he's like 0.25 of a second behind this guy. I said, yeah, but look at them. Look at them. One of them's all over the place. The other one's in the zone. And of course, Linford went on to, to, to win gold. And the point of the story is, Lizzie, and you know this better than anybody, um, you could be the quickest in the world, but it's one thing being the quickest when it doesn't matter so much. It's another thing being a big tournament athlete. And there's quite a few Brits who have perhaps punched above their weight when it comes to tournaments, but it's tournaments that matter. Yeah, and I think it's hard being the athlete that has a big target on your back as well. So the American athlete would have just been looking behind him and thinking, oh, I've got to do my best otherwise. And Linford, you know, he's he's fighting there. And uh, yeah, I, th I think that was a good bet. I think those tunnel vision athletes, you can you can sometimes you can smell it. You can see it in their eyes. You can even if they don't know that they're emitting that fear or whatever, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. And there's the, yeah, there's so many examples, aren't there, of, of athletes who kind of disappear a little bit and then reappear when it really, really matters. Anyway, um, right. Uh, it is my turn. Question seven, golf. Um, the Ryder Cup question was five Europeans have scored 20 points or more in the history of the Ryder Cup. And Nick Fado leads with 25, name three of the other four. They are in this order. Bernhard Langer, 24 points. Colin Montgomery, 23 and a half. Uh, the great Seve Ballesteros, 22 and a half, and uh, Jose Maria Lathabal on 20 and a half. And that was worth three points. So well done if you've got those uh, those three. Question eight, Lizzie, your turn. Yeah, so this was when tennis was readmitted to the Summer Games in 98. Um, who won the men's and the women's singles title? The women's answer was Steffi Graf, so I think that was an easier answer the men the ma the the guy who won the men's competition was um milo slav mercy i don't know how you say his surname metish metish thank you as well there we go it helps <laughs> you to speak speak fluent slovakian you see yeah um so he it was for the czech it was for czechoslovakia then but he's actually now slovakian and uh, obviously uh, the czech republic and slovakia uh, uh departed so yes yeah, Steffi's kind of the more obvious one miloslav metish uh, the, the best tournament that he ever won. Right, question nine, Formula One. Alex Albon, fifth currently in the Drivers' Championships. Great young talent. Where's he from? Obviously, with a name like Alex Albon, Thailand. That uh -huh. is where Alex Albon is from. It's one of those things, Liz, you know, like a quiz, it's easy if you know the answer. Yeah. And it's difficult if you don't. Right, final question in this half goes over, is over to you. Yeah, so this was the um, 1976 onwards. GB has won three gold medals in ice skating. Can you name all three? The two easy ones, I think, were Robin Cousins, and that was 1918, Torvald Dean, 84. John Curry won in 1976. Now, why is John Curry hard? It's just because it's 1976 and you were just a twinkle in your mum's eye. That's it. I just I've met Robin and I've met it at a distance, Torvald Dean, and I haven't seen or you know um, chatted. Yeah, to John's, yeah. Uh, John's no longer with us, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but he he kind of set set the scene. He we had that little golden spell of uh, you know it was none of this skeleton Bob business back then. It was it was all about it the. It was. It just wasn't in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, right, so that ends the first half. That's uh, 10 questions, 20 points. Whilst everybody tots up their, their points, Lizzie and I, it's a half-time chat now. So everybody else is having their tea and their oranges or whatever else people do in the half-time dressing room. And we're going to just um, have a little bit of a, of a catch-up. So fir first things first, you better just uh, explain to everybody how on earth a girl from Seven Oaks, okay, you went skiing, that's, that's one thing. How on earth did you end up doing the, uh, the skeleton bob? Well, it's called Skeleton, not Skeleton Bob. Um, I guess the Bob... Well, I, was, I was calling you Bob. How, how oh, did you do the Skeleton? Right, yeah. Comma, Bob. <laughs> well, um, I mean, um, I heard... So basically, I'm one of three girls. I'm the middle daughter. My older sister, Katie, she's 18 months older. Both sisters are like six foot, so I'm slightly smaller. And we all love sports. They were both... Very, we, you know, they were good at netball and I tried every single sport that I could. And um, I loved javelin. I loved the power event, shot put, javelin, sprinting and tried heptathlon as well. 
but by the time I was 18 I, I went to uni and was still training for athletics you know every night after uni I, I realised I wasn't going to get my Great Britain vest. I was never going to be picked, um, which sucked. <laughs> and my older sister, Casey, had seen this talent search called um, Sporting Giants. So her being over six foot, she applied for that and got selected into the handball team for London. Twin. It, it was ahead of London 2012. She was left handed and um, that opportunity was perfect for her she actually didn't uh, follow it on she went to university instead but two years after Katie was selected for that luckily the talent search came around for like normal sized people um and that was called girls for gold so I sort of signed up I went um up to Loughborough uni and tried out for the day and basically they're looking for all your basic physical characteristics arm span height sprint speed throwing ability you know da -da -da, the whole lot and they were categorizing us into sports we could be good at. And so I knew they were looking for like rowing, um, cycling, kayaking, and loads of like different sports. And modern pentathlon was on there. So I'd done riding as a kid, I'd done running. So I was like, I can do this, I can swim, I can do what you need me to do. Please pick me for, for modern pentathlon. Um, and I, I did all the testing and then three weeks later I got a letter back saying congratulations you have been selected for the skeleton and I was like what what <laughs> I didn't see that on the you list know what it was. no I'd seen it on the list at the bottom because it was alphabetical but I didn't know they actually sent a little cd with um Shelley Rudman who won silver in uh, 2006 um so I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was about. But anyway, I thought, right, they've told me I could be good at this. They've looked at my physicality. So I went to the next day, um, testing day. So that was 100 um, women in Bath. We went to do more like basic physical testing. Um, so 1,500 girls initially, then, then 100. Then we were cut to 50, then to 20, then to 10. So that whole process was like six months um and then eventually we were told okay we're heading out to Norway bring all this different stuff and and we're gonna actually have a go at the sport and when you had an actual go at the sport and let's just make this absolutely clear you're face down you're on a reasonably flimsy uh contraption you're hurtling at huge speeds I've done it on the Cresta run in San Moritz a number of times you're braver than I am the crest is hard it's well, different I'm, as well. Yeah. Um, well, I was doing it for a magazine article and I was being paid for it. But still, nonetheless, it is definitely one of the stupidest things I've done in it's my life. I've done a few. But yeah. anyway, my point being, you didn't know much about it. When you when you first did it, what was your reaction? Was it, was it you know, well, I can't say it because we're live, but swear word. Or was it, wow, this is brilliant. It was swear words. <laughs> it was... Right. So, so of your so I, I was laying down on the sled ready to go. The, the coach had his foot just in front of the sled, um, so it didn't go anywhere. And I laid down onto it with a with a crash helmet. I had my little sister Charlotte's goggles, ski goggles on, which were a bit small, but I pinged them on. Um, I had eight hundred meter running spikes on because they were the most like appropriate near thing. So I just got on, held on tight, tried to grip onto the saddle, and he just moved his foot. And I trundled into the track and you're just going down, down. I'm thinking, right, focus. Where am I going? Try, try and think, okay, corner four goes this way. Okay, <sighs> corner five goes this way. Relax, relax. And corner six, and it just picks up, picks up, picks up. And it's like, ah! Because it's it's overwhelming. The noise is overwhelming. The sound and the vibrations, you know, through your body. And it's, um, yeah, just all all overwhelming not knowing what's going on and not being able to control or stop or slow down um i didn't i after the first run i did not want to have another go it was um out of my comfort zone completely well, well you know what they must have known what they were talking about because it worked out okay in the end didn't it <laughs> yeah but you, you can't predict that far into the future that was that was back in 2009 and yes, it was only five years before Sochi, but yeah. <laughs> now, 
Tell us about, because obviously we, uh, time is it's very short, you obviously won gold in, in Sochi, which was brilliant. Tell us about four years later in 2018, two things I want to talk to you about. Number one, you were the flag bearer at the opening ceremony for the Winter Olympics. I mean, that is special. And then number two, Sochi was relatively smooth going. But four years on, it was it was anything but, was it? It was just drama after drama after drama. And somehow you still managed to win. Yeah, yeah. So the, the flag bearer opportunity was pretty insane. Like I wasn't thinking about it or how important it was at all. I just thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. No problem. And I'm going to go to the opening ceremony anyway. Um, and then I was told to go and collect the flag and thought, okay, right. Just don't bang it. Don't break it. Don't do anything. And you're slowly being herded around this um, kind of um, tent away from the opening ceremony until it's your go. And it wasn't until I was paced out just before the stadium, there was a circle that says flag bearer stand here and then everyone's lined up carefully behind. And then the country in front went and it was just us next. And I thought, whoa, this is, and I did actually cry then because it's, um, yeah, it's, it was a big moment. Um, and that, you know, that whole week going up to the Pyeongchang um, where the track was it was very cold there it was very dry very dusty and I didn't expect it to be so cold um so it's like minus 20 or something a lot colder than Sochi and Vancouver where there were quite warm winter olympics um and I picked up a cold that went on to a chest infection which I didn't realize we didn't realize was a chest infection until day two of the competition um and I was, I couldn't really sleep, you know, through that week, I wasn't able, I had to sleep like upright and um, using all these breathing contraptions to try and, um, you know, saline solutions and try and flush out my sinuses. They were actually bought for the Olympic skiers, but um, yeah, I ended up having some real issues that week. It, it was, it was, it was okay. I kind of got through it and um, I, it wasn't until after the competition that they thought I might have pneumonia. So I had to come back to the UK early. But I mean, that aside from the chest infection and the illness, I had my vestibular disorder where um, I would black out or, or or struggle to know where I was on, on some run. So that's because I've got some damage in one of my ears. So and then on top of that, I was on terrible form the whole Olympic season. I couldn't I couldn't perform and I was trying so hard I thought I'll just do more research. I'll learn more. I'll, I'll work harder. And it got worse and worse and worse. Um, so I was kind of scraped through the selection into the Winter Olympics. So all that kind of unfortunately came together on the first day of competition where I was super hyped up. I knew I believed in myself, but I wasn't on great form. And I went for the first run and my vestibular disorder kicked in and I became completely disorientated. Um, and um yeah wanted to pull out of the competition because i thought i'm not safe doing this i can't do it um but my my physio she's i was sort of crying in the bathroom and saying you know i just can't do it i feel awful and she said if you could go again it would be really great because um you're quite good at this sport um so i sort of thought right i need to check i'm all right we need to do all the tests and and check safety wise and I did about, you know, just about managed to keep in the competition, not fight for it, but keep in the competition until the last run where I was two hundredths of a second off of first place. Somehow, I don't know how it all come together. And God, by that point, I was I'm given everything. I don't care how I feel or that I can't really breathe or that I'm getting disorientated. This is what I have worked eight, ten years for um, and gave it everything. <laughs> so that's uh, that's that's a great um, that's a great template, isn't it? To uh, to win a, a skeleton gold, be disorientated, have a, a pneumonia uh, sinking in, uh, have a chest infection, be in crap form. But apart from that, you just go on and win the Olympic gold. It, it's it that goes back to the big tournament competitor in in it, isn't it? Because that, that's what it must be. That must just be sheer will to to. I and mean, you you meet a lot of fellow winners. You speak to someone like Steve Redgrave he's had about four the most debilitating conditions you can have you, f you find a way to win don't you well I think the British team the skeleton team are very set up to focus on the Olympics we talk about the Olympics every day we prepare the athletes but 
I got there because of Laura Dees, who won bronze. Um, we we kind of got there together. I wouldn't have been able to go out as a lone ranger. I wouldn't have been able to support myself. But we both pushed each other and, and helped each other and were a solid team. I was very grateful to have a, a fierce competitor as a close friend. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You had to, in order to be the best in Britain, you had to be world class, didn't you? Now, I'm mindful of the, the time. We're going to get back to the quiz. But a final thing. You are in your early 30s. You, you look young, young, and, you know, athletic i know you're now a mum um you've retired winter <laughs> olympics just two years time less than two years time are you sure are you sure <laughs> that's it i bet you'd be quite good i don't know which are the new sports that have um, been added to the winter olympics i know surfing and speed climbing are now in the summers but like some of the new mad sports always do interest me um obviously i'd never do it but yeah, I did that. Yeah, I'm done. But I just love watching all the different sports, all the kind of up and coming athletes for sure. <laughs> I bet you do okay. You know, if you went back on that uh, skeleton, I bet you do well. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to entice you back. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, we nearly got Lizzie to uh, to give us a world exclusive then that she was coming back. But um, uh, I'll work on her, people. Okay, I'll work on her. Because um, it'd be nice to win another gold medal, frankly, at the Winter Olympics. Anyway, let's get back to the quiz. If everybody's ready, poised, um, I shall kick off uh, with question 11. It's a football question. Um, last weekend, just gone, Arsenal and Chelsea won uh, their respective semi-finals and will meet each other in the FA Cup final. Uh, they met each other not that long ago in the FA Cup final. Can you tell me which year it was? And also, what was the score? And that was worth two points. Arsenal, Chelsea, last time they played in the FA Cup final. And what was the score? Lizzie, over to you. Question 12. Yes, this is for the cycling fans. Which country was four times Tour de France winner Chris Froome born? Um, where, where was he born? Yeah, which country is he, is he from? Are you into your cycling? Yeah. Yeah, got like... I'm hesitant to say that because I I've got a bike and I love cycling. It's just a lot of effort, isn't it? Cycling. It's like a lot of lycra, and it, a lot of efforts. You used to wear lycra. Yeah, I think that's why I put off it. No, I love I love watching cycling. I can basically cycle just me and my husband. I can't be trusted in a group at all. They get so close to each other, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a bit competitive though? As oh, you obviously are competitive. Are you competitive about anything? By the way. Yeah, if, we I have... ever took you, if I ever took you on a bike on a country road, would you go, mm, well, that's it, and then overtake me? Well, I've only got power. I can't do any sort of distance. So I could I could have you over, yeah, any short distance. I can't turn that competitiveness off, which is why I struggle to go out and just, like, exercise. I'm like, we're training or not. Yeah, it must be tough, actually. I, was, I remember uh, talking to Rebecca Addington, saying it must be, must be hell being on a holiday, just having a nice swim in the pool. <laughs> and people go, there's Rebecca Allington, and then they all try and take her on. And then you probably get sucked into it, and she ends up racing everybody all the time. Um, <laughs> right, my turn. Question 13. It's a cricket question. Uh, so, as the cook leads the way in most test centuries for England, with 33, followed by Kevin Peterson on 23. Then there were four famous uh, uh, former batsmen um, on 22 tons. Uh, can you name... Three of them. Three England batsmen have scored 22 hundreds. Can you name three out of the four who have done that? And that's worth three points. OK, your turn, uh, Lizzie. Question 14. Can you name two um, Winter Sports Olympics? So the last one and the next. That's and two if you'd been listening to our halftime chat, you'd have heard Lizzie say the last one if you'd been listening, people. Uh, but she did it say in the next one. Uh, although thinking about it, without giving away too many clues, does it strike me as an obvious Winter Olympic venue, I have to say? I, I was, it's very I'd cold. It's very, yeah. very cold out of the city, but it's the first um, city to hold both summers and winter, I believe. Oh, there's another clue, people. There's another clue. Um, fine, OK. And then one assumes there must be some mountains relatively relatively near to there right my turn question 15 it's a rugby question Manu Tuilagi 
has just recently left Leicester and joined the Sales Sharks. Um, he has a whole raft of brothers. I've met most of them. They're huge. Um, five. Can you name two of them? They all they have all played for Samoa. So name two of the five Tuilangi brothers who have all played for Samoa. And as I say, they are huge. Right, your turn, <laughs> uh, Lizzie. Question 16. Yeah, so this is Formula One. Can you name the famous circuits that staged the Belgian Grand Prix and the German Grand Prix? Um, it's not the old German track. Two points. Yeah, there's a famous old German track that they don't use anymore. How about ask you this one? Are you into F1? Is that something that floats your boat? Well, my first job was at Brands Hatch down in the pit lane. Um, it wasn't used so much in form for Formula One anymore, um, more super bikes and truck racing, which is fantastic. I'd recommend to anyone. Um, always at the end of the season because they completely rip up the track. But yeah, Formula One's cool. Formula E is even better. Um, and Formula W, I think it's called now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots to so keep cool. up with. Again, because you lived in Seven Oaks, you were probably 10 miles from from Brands Hatch and again before your time but it was the home of the British Grand Prix it shared it with Silverstone uh, but yeah. what did you do there you said it's your first job what what the mind boggles yeah so pit lane number one the first unit is the CAF so I was there on like 13 hour shifts teas coffees you know all of it serving people but the best thing was that when it was Formula 3 so you have a two-seater car and at the end of the day because I'd met all the crews and all the drivers being down in the pit lane um I had a couple of goes going around the track on in a Formula 3 car maybe that's wow. a speed and demon in me yeah it is the speed thing and you did enjoy that loved it it's a great track great track yeah it's quite hilly isn't it yes where it drops and then turns it's just oh yeah, yeah. You, I, I, like, I always think I could do it. I could, you know, surely I could just put my foot down, but their skill and their like trust. And it's just like, yeah. I, yeah, we've got a Tesla now, which is very quick as well. And I will always freak out way before the car freaks out. It's one of those things where we all think we're good drivers. And I've had a, a, a go at, you know, taking on racing drivers. And what I learned was um, there is a natural talent and skill, natural affinity between you and the car. And I think, you know, oh, you know, I could drive you. All you do is put your foot down on the accelerator. But it's something that they have and yeah. you don't, which is this this natural feel of of the car, when to brake, when to accelerate. Um, and you've you've either got it or you haven't. I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed with your story. You 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 built it up. It sounded so gl so glamorous. Oh yeah, I used to work at Brands Hatch. Oh wow, what what did you do? Like you were. Everyone driving. needs a cup of tea and coffee. Don't put it down. <laughs> I'm not putting it down. It just, I was, I just, it wasn't quite as glamorous. And, well, as, you thought um, I was one of the... Yeah, I thought you were the flag. I thought you did the chicken <laughs> flag or something. Right. Um, uh, whose turn is it? Your turn, isn't it? It's, it's, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's my turn. Question 17. It's uh, a golf question. So uh, Jack Nicholas, the great Jack Nicholas, has won the most majors with 18. Um, hard to see that ever being beaten. Tiger Woods is second on 15, but he's running out of steam big time. Can you name two of the next three in that list of the all-time uh, greatest winners of golf majors? Can you name two of the next three? Th uh, they're all really, really famous names. I'm going to give you a little clue. You've got to go back a few years, okay? Not a massive clue. It's a bit of a clue. Okay, Lizzie, over to you. Question 18. Tennis again. John McEnroe beat Bjorn Borg in 1981 at the Wimbledon final. The American would also win the title in 83 and 84. Who did he beat? That's two points. Now, I think you'd be quite good at tennis. Yes? No? Yeah. Yeah, I was good at tennis when I did it. I mean, I, as I said, I did every single sport that I could get my hands on. But in my tennis phase, I did enjoy it. Yeah, no, I thought, what was your, what was your, if I was playing you, what would I, what would be your weakness? What would I capitalise? Where would I hit it? To your backhand? Back, yeah, backhand is everyone's weakness, isn't it? <laughs> well, long game, long game as well, because I, I don't understand distance or, or managing my power. So I'd always just smack it and not get it in the court. Ah, okay. I so, mean, not the variance. If you ever play Lizzie Arnold at tennis, <laughs> into a backhand and just get it over, because in the end, you'll just lose patience and smack it out. That's it. <laughs> That's how you win. Brilliant. Well, 
worth knowing that worth knowing right um uh, my turn question 19 and this is an olympic stroke rowing question we've already mentioned him in our chat uh, sir steve redgrave one of the you know absolute all-time greatest olympians that this country's produced in 2000 you may remember this moment lizzie he won his fifth olympic gold medal it was on a friday night it was in australia so it was saturday morning friday night and um, it's probably one of the very few times when the country including the pubs all stopped to watch rowing um they would have done the same by the way thinking about it for for, for skeleton as well but everybody stopped to watch uh, steve win his fifth gold medal in five consecutive Olympics at Sydney. So Matthew Pinson won his third at the time, but there are two others in the boat in the Cotsler's fours who were part of the Sydney four. Can you name them? The two others in the boat with Redgrave and Pinson to win gold at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. And the final question of uh, the quiz, the honor goes to you, Lizzie. Thank you. And we're taking it back to winter sports again. Franz Klammer famously won at the men's downhill skiing Olympic gold medal. Where did he come from and which year did he become Olympic champion? Yeah, really glamorous. I once shared a taxi with him from Edinburgh Airport to St Andrews. He was playing in the, uh, what do you call it, oh, the Dunhill right. Golf. You know the Dunhill Golf where they get all the celebrities playing in it in right. October? Hugh Grant and both. And uh, he was playing in it. And I said to him, I didn't know you were a golfer. And he said, I am, but I don't like it. And I said, why do you not like it? And he said, too slow. Oh. Well, it would be, wouldn't it, if your fans clamour? Yeah. You don't do anything quickly. Right, so we're just going to give the answers in a second, but um, just let people um, tot up their answers. It gives me time very quickly to say to you, Lizzie, that uh, Winter Olympics in Britain, OK, we had the skating, ice skating in the... Uh, in the late 70s and early 80s but we've never really been associated with being a winter olympic sport um i would suggest thanks in no part to you but also to others and i think also with the introduction of some of the more extreme sports um nobody's laughing at britain anymore are they i'm not saying we're, we're quite switzerland austria yet but we are getting more and more serious force in winter olympics and winter sports yeah, I think so. You know, for a long time, it was the little brother of the Summer Olympics. But there's so much amazing support from the BOA where there's like shared learning from the cyclists in the Summer Olympics. You know, the Winter Olympic sports learn from them or from rowing. And it's it's the, t the team, the whole one team GB ethos isn't summer and winter. It's that everyone is learning and developing together. Um, and hopefully internationally, we're not laughed at too much. You know, we... We love our sport and we love performing at sport. And um, I think people respect that and people can see that and see that we've got um, great funding and, and we're ambitious and we're there to, you know, put, the best thing about sport is that if, if everyone could compete at their best and if you win, you know that you have won the best competition and beaten the best athletes in the world. So the more athletes we can get into sport at that high level, wherever they're from, is brilliant. And let's be honest, not that we're making any excuses because, you know, you don't operate in an excuses environment. You've just got to get on with it. But let's be honest, if you are Austrian or Swiss or, you know, Norwegian or whatever, you, 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 you're you skiing as you're walking. It's uh, it's it's on your doorstep, isn't it? We have to make a, a bit more effort to do it, to do so, which we are. Yeah, but that was always my benefit in skeleton versus any kind of um, issue because I would have hated being a tennis player where, where I was doing my sport every day and the psychological demands on that. In winter sports, because we don't have snow, because we don't have the track, when you are training on ice, on snow, it's purposeful. You're thinking about it. You're reviewing it properly. You're not just doing it every day and, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. It's purposeful practice. There we go. Right. Let's, uh, let's rattle through the answers. Uh, this is flown by, isn't it, by the way? Absolutely <laughs> flown by. I can't believe it. Right. Um, so my turn. Question 11 is the football question. FA Cup final this year is Arsenal v Chelsea. Um, I wanted to know when they last played an FA Cup final. It was only in 2017 and Arsenal won 2-1. And I think that's going to be the score again 
Sorry, Chelsea fans. That's worth two points. <laughs> um, your turn, Lizzie. Question tw uh, question 12? 12, yeah. So the four times Tour de France winner, Chris Froome, where was he born? The answer is Kenya. Of course it is. Um, who would have thought that? Right, my turn. Question 13, cricket question. Uh, we're talking about leading century scores um, in English cricket, uh, uh, test history. Alistair Cook leads with 33. KP is second with 23. Four are on 22. Name three of them. They are Wally Hammond, back in the day. Colin Cowdery, back in the day as well. Sir Geoffrey Boycott. And uh, far more recently, Ian Bell. Yep, Ian Bell is up there with those other names with 22 hundreds each. So that's worth three points. Lizzie, question 14. So this is the two Winter Olympic venues. The last Olympics was in Pyeongchang, not Pyongyang, because that would be North Korea, but Pyeongchang. So it's 2018. And the next Winter Olympics is in 2022 in Beijing. Well, if it had been in Pyongyang, the medals table would have said North Korea, 80 gold medals. Yeah. Everybody else, no gold medals. Yeah. I've said that controversially. Let's hope that Kim Son Young isn't listening to this at the moment. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it's been nice knowing you and uh, goodbye. Um, right, um, my turn. Yes, yeah, so Beijing is what we were talking about uh, for, um, so quite an interesting, two in a row in the sort of the Far East. I'm wondering, do we know where the next one is yet, Lizzie? No, I don't. No, so we, I'm hoping it'll be a European, like say that again. I said the contenders, do we do you know who they are? They're probably European, aren't they? Um, God, I'm just trying to remember because I know that there was at one point they were trying to do two at once, but I think that might have been for the summers because it was Tokyo and Paris. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm just, I'm hoping it's a European country. I think it might be one of the European um, yeah. places, but it'll be great to read. All I can know or say is that I hope that they're reusing tracks and reusing um, accommodation if they can because, you know, the expenditure needed to create another Olympics is it needs to be kind of managed a bit better. Yeah. Okay. And there's plenty out there, isn't there? Uh, right. Uh, my turn. Question 15, uh, the rugby question about Manu and his famous family, um, the two laggies. Can you name two of Manu's brothers who have played for Samoa? Uh, I'll name you five. Freddy, otherwise uh, Ferretti. Um, Henry, who's the biggest of the lot, by the way. I once ran into him in a, in a training <laughs> session. <laughs> no idea what was going on. Alex, Andy, uh, uh, well, Alex is actually Alessana, but everybody called him Alex. Andy is Anitilea, but everybody called him Andy. I used to call him Sir, frankly. It was much, much more sensible. And Vavai. <laughs> so any of those five, two from those five, all played for uh, Sir Samoa. Uh, okay, that's worth two points. So question 16, Lizzie? Um, we're looking for you to name the two famous circuits. Um, the Belgian Grand Prix and the German Grand Prix tracks. The answer is Spa and Hockenheim. Yeah, Hockenheim. Not the Nürburgring, which used to be the famous German uh, circuit, which had literally about, I think it was 13 miles and 35 corners. It was ridiculous. Wow. Um, okay, question 17 was the golf question um, about the majors. Jack Nicholas leads with 18. Tiger Woods second with 15. Name two of the next three uh, they are Walter Hagen on 11. That's going back a few years. And then on equal nine is Ben Hogan and Gary Player. And Gary Player, Lizzie, is the one uh, who came out with that quote that you would have heard a million times, which is when he was playing in a golf game and he chipped the ball in from an impossible angle. It went straight in and his opponent said, wow, that was lucky. And he said, yeah, it's surprising. The more I practice, the luckier I get. <laughs> I you must have heard that one. From. Yeah. It comes from him originally, but everybody's used it uh, used it since. Question yeah. 18. Um, so who did John McEnroe beat in 83 and 84 um, in Wimbledon? So the answer was Chris Lewis and Jimmy Connors. That was yeah. two points. If you got Chris Lewis, very well done. New Zealand guy. Didn't really do an awful lot uh, before or indeed since, but somehow cropped up in, in the final and got well and truly stuffed by Macron. As indeed, as indeed did Connors in three straight sets. Uh, Macron was on fire 
uh, mm -hmm. back then. Right, my turn. Question uh, 19 Olympics slash rowing, 2000 Sydney Olympics, the red grade four, red grade one is fifth gold medal, Matt Pinsett won his third. Who are the other two in the Cotsler's fours? They were, I think, a lot of you would get the first one, not many would get the second one. It's James Cracknell and Tim Foster. Uh, Those were the yeah, two. Yeah. yeah, you know that, don't you? Those were the two in that crew. And finally, question 20, winter sports. Over to you, Lizzie Arnold, MBE. OBE, OBE and MBE. <laughs> Thank Dane. you. It'll be a Dane soon. <laughs> yeah. um, so Franz Klammer, which country is he from and which year did he become the Olympic champion? The answer was Austria. And for the second point, it's 1976. 1976, when you were just a little twinkle in your mother's eye and I wasn't. Well, I wasn't in twinkle in your mother's eye, obviously. Um, <laughs> but I was a bit more than a twinkle. Uh, right. OK. Well, can you believe it? OK. In the speed it took you to shoot down a skeleton run, we are done and dusted, Lizzie Arnold. So, uh, everybody, hope you've really enjoyed the, the quiz. 40 points up for grabs. 40 and a half. Call... 40 and a half. There was a half. Oh, yeah. You three and a half, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'd love to know what the highest scorer was. I don't know, but I would imagine, I like to think people got between 25 and, say, 33. I think yeah, you don't want that, anyone above 35 because it's far too easy then. No, and you don't want anybody getting nine, do you? It's a bit, it's not, it's a bit miserable, isn't it? They just got yeah. nine or something. So hopefully <laughs> everybody knew enough, learned a bit. What did you learn? You must have learned a few things uh, from well, today's Well, reminder of t Tim Foster in, in the, uh, in the yeah. four, Cox's four, um, the quote, I um, yeah. can't remember who that was by now. Gary Player. Gary Player, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and England and France being the Six Nations people at the there top. There we go. I mean, I learned, to be fair, I learned in every answer. There we go, there we go. And, and most of it's gone straight in one ear <laughs> and straight out the other one again. But anyway... <laughs> Like like when we when we uh, prepped up for A levels, yep, yeah? uh, you knew it all the night before, and the night afterwards it was mostly gone. Right. But it didn't matter because you done your exam. The day, Lizzie, thanks so much for joining us. A reminder, everybody, okay, uh, to um, have a look, check out Mind. Any donations are really really important uh, uh, for Mind. Uh, we either have all suffered or suffer from mental health, or we know somebody pretty close to us who who does. Um, so it is important. It, it is uh, absolutely an, an illness and it's probably more prevalent now than, than ever before. So uh, do do please um, uh, spare uh, a few pounds. Any amount really, really helps. And Lizzie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for being a trooper. Uh, rare to see you sitting down when I speak to you. But anyway, it makes a nice change. Um, <laughs> and um, we, we hopefully will see you again very, very soon. Come to our wards this year. You blew us out last year. Come to our wards this year. They were fab. Thank you. I'm going to be in um, New Zealand uh, later this year. But well, what kind of excuse is that? <laughs> I look forward to, so what's next year, 2021? Put my name down. I'll be there. Brilliant. Right. You've said it publicly now. Fantastic. All right, Lizzie. <laughs> Thanks so much again. Have a great night and we'll catch up with you again very soon. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Hello. Okay, everybody. So that was uh, uh, Lizzie Arnold. Uh, I said MBE, OBE, everything else. Uh, wasn't she great? Um, hope you really uh, enjoyed yourself uh, tonight. What a great guest we had, as, as always. Great fun, uh, Lizzie. Um, if you hadn't met her or knew about her before, hopefully... Uh, you know a lot more about her now. Um, we will be um, producing more stream shows. Watch out uh, on the Sporting Club website, uh, www.thesportingclub.co, or indeed on, on our social media at the Sporting C or at LDN Sporting Club. Um, we'll be making some announcements over the next few days, both for our 60 minute show, which is our 60 minute show which is uh, interviews with big stars uh, and indeed um uh, sports quiz with the stars and obviously watch out for everything else that we're doing our big live events our lunches are coming back very soon as i said at the beginning uh, of the show david hay uh, tim henman sir jackie stewart 
We've got a Barry Hearn breakfast. We've got a, an evening with Lewis Moody and much, much more. Um, but in the meantime, uh, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Um, have a great week. Still stay safe. We're not out of the woods quite yet. Uh, keep well. And we'll catch up with you again very, very soon. Have a, have a great night. Have a great week. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. Good night.